Hello everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending upon where you are joining from. I hope you are all seeing me well. Um, so in this session, like today, I'm going to present on the topic A to Z Azure security concepts. Um, so if you are not familiar with the security in Azure, or if you are if you are already familiar but want to know in depth knowledge about it, this session is right for you. So hopefully you will enjoy this session. Uh, so let's get started. Before beginning the session, I would like to thank all of our sponsors, um, the gold sponsors and uh, silver platinum sponsors. Uh, thank you so much. Without your support, this event would not have been possible. Myself, I am Deepti Goguri. Um, I'm a database administrator with about like eight years of experience as a DBA. I'm also a data platform MVP and also a Microsoft certified trainer. And also I do organize like I'm a co-organizer for a couple of user groups. I'm a co-organizer for diversity, equity, and inclusion user group, and Microsoft Data and AI South Florida user group. And also, I'm a co-organizer for Data TGIF. Um, and I do volunteer for Women in Technology user group as well. So apart from my work, as well as my community work, I love doing arts and crafts. Like this, this is like a very a big session. I'm going to present a lot on, on this topic. So if I'm unable to answer your questions, uh, please contact me on either uh, LinkedIn or on Twitter. A DBA Nuggets is my user ID on Twitter and all of my details are there. And if you would like to go deep into this content, I have a series of blog posts on dbanuggets.com. That's my website. If you go ahead and click on Azure um, tab, you can find all of my articles related to this session. So before uh, beginning, I would like to tell a little analogy on this topic. So let's say there is this thief who who want to do the bank robbery, right? He plans really well. And one day he will try to enter into the bank to rob the money from the money vault, let's say. So the, the, that person, right, the thief, he have to first enter into the door, like any door, back door or front door but he had to first cross the parking lot, right? So in the parking lot, we have all the security cameras set because it's a, it's a, it's a bank, right? So he had to first cross the security cameras. Let's say he crossed the camera somehow, he put the hoodie on and then he entered into the main, main door of the bank. But he had to just break that main door, right? Let's say he broke the main door. It's a physical lock, let's say. And then he entered into the locker rooms, let's say, the main small locker rooms, multiple locker rooms. All those locker rooms are having like their physical keys. He tried to bake one or two of them, but he got frustrated because he don't have much time. So he directly want to enter into the main money vault where he where we have like so much of money of the bank, right? So let's say he wanted to enter into the main vault, but uh, there is this um, digital lock to enter into the main vault room. So to break that, digital lock, he have to enter the password, right? So one or two times he tried to enter the password, but then the, there is this multi-factor authentication setup. So it, it sent a code to the multi-factor authentication um, mobile phone uh, or whatever it is set up. Then he tried, tried, and there is this alert already set up. Like if the password is set for, like if the password is wrong for a couple of times, send an alert to the either the security person of the bank or directly send a call to 911 that is automatically set up, right? So he tried, it didn't work. So the call went to 911 and they are on, on their way. So he couldn't break it. Even though if he able to break the digital lock, there is still the main key wall that he had to break to, to get the money. So by, by now, police has arrived and he, they, they will definitely catch him because he couldn't break anyway and he will be under the bars now. In the same way, we have security in Azure setup. In the same way, like the, the guy, the thief, he tried to break all of those layers, right? Those are all the layers, in-depth defense layers, to, even before entering into the money world. Only authorized people are, are allowed to enter into the money world, right? In the same way, we have different layers of security in-depth defense layers in Azure as well before entering into the data. Here, the money is data itself, the person's data, the sensitive data, right? Any data like SSN and the person information, all of 
like it's more than valuable than money let's say like we have different defense mechanisms here like the the lights the the camera in the parking lot are like the network security that's a outer layer of security layer in asia but as you go deep you have like different layers of security like access management which which comes with the authentication and authorization threat protection like if somebody else is trying to access your data from different location we need to get the alerts for those threats because those are threats and we need the data needs to be protected and the data itself should be protected as well that is a different layer of security in azure before reaching the data itself we have all of these security layers so in this session we are going to talk about each and every layer of the security we have in azure let's talk about the network security which is the top level security in azure the first layer so in the network security we have different options available we have four different options now when we talk from the left side to the right side the the security gets increased the safety gets increased but let's talk about the least secure ones which is the left side of your screen allow access to azure services now why i say it's uh, least secure is because once you enable it once you turn it on any any service in azure within azure can connect to your database so on prem servers cannot connect but any other services within azure can connect and and the and the you have the public ip address here it is accessible through internet which is very secure so you might be asking like when it is on when it is least secure why do we even have this option right so um there is this option for a reason let's say you you are developing a database and you are testing couple of things and you you wanted to build a database immediately and you don't have to go through all of these network security layer settings and everything but you just want to test couple of things and then you want to delete the database later in that situation by enabling this option you can connect to the database any other services within azure can connect you can do your testing and you are done but it's not secure when we when we build our real servers right like set up our development and production production databases the next layer of security is firewall rules this is the firewall rules that you generally create on your on prem servers it's the same way you create the firewall rules um uh, in azure as well but here the difference is like you will be you can connect from your on prem servers you will just build the firewall rule to connect to your azure and you will be connected but here we still have the private public ip address just like the way you have like allow access to azure services like when you do the ns lookup everything is available like the public ip address is seen uh, like region where the database is hosted you can see the control ring information you can see the same way with firewall rules it have a public ip address and it is not secure because all of the information can be still seen the dns hierarchy information when you do the ns lookup it's still available so it's not that secure as well let's go to the next level of network security which is virtual network rules so here you will build only one virtual network rule in the virtual uh, network where you are connecting to your azure sql database so let's say we have multiple virtual networks all of those multiple virtual networks can be connected to one virtual network through the different technologies like the vnet to vnet and other different uh, technologies that we have and we can create just one virtual network rule that is connected to the database on that particular virtual network so even though we create the one virtual network rule still when you do the ns lookup it still have the though it have the private ip address the other information like a region where the database is hosted control ring information is still available but it is secure than the than the left side rules right the most secure ones is a private link is when we create the private endpoint when we create the private endpoint to the database we will get the private ip address 
it will block all of the public access like you are not connected to the database through internet because internet is not available anymore through the any service that wanted to connect have to go through this private endpoint to connect to your database so even though you do the ns lookup the all the other information is is secure it won't be available for the public to see like even if you do the ns lookup so it is secure let me show you the so let's see how how we can see these network uh, security rules right let's say i have a server sql server security demo and we are talking about the security in this session right so underneath the security blade of the sql server that i build go to the networking because we are talking about the network security rules the first one if you see the number one allow azure services and resources to access this server when i if i click the turn on right any services in azure can connect but now i want to disable that and go to the second option which is firewall rule let's say i want to i want to create a um, database but then i want my local local computer to connect to the to the database so what i'll do is i'll, I'll just add the ip address the firewall rule to create the firewall rule and then once i am done i will just save it after i save it i'll try to connect to the azure sql database from my local machine i just added the firewall rule right so i'll be able to connect that's the that's creating the firewall rule but now let's go ahead and see the most secure ones which is the private endpoint so to uh, sorry uh, i so how do we how do we actually create the private endpoint i i think i have it here yeah so in the network security blade again underneath the security go to the private private access where we can create the private endpoint in this session i'm not going to show you like each step by step to create the private endpoint it is very simple to create uh, because we have lot of things to cover i will just go ahead and show you um, once you create the private endpoint like the most important things that you have to know that you need to have to create the private endpoint is like your subscription id on which private network you are creating this um this private endpoint those sort of things so once you create i would like to connect now after i created the private endpoint i would like to connect to the private private network the private like the virtual machine where i actually uh, the that particular virtual machine is hosted on the virtual network where i hosted like where the database is actually connected to so i am connected to the virtual machine right now and i i am connected to the database actually and i would like to see the client net address by running this particular query to see whether it is showing the private ip address because we created the private endpoint right we do not want to see any public ip address here so the result is showing 10.0.0.7 now i would like to confirm whether that is the actual private ip address of my virtual machine now i'll go to the uh, azure portal i'll connect it to the i'll connect to the virtual machine where i actually connected to the database and i would like to see the private ip address i would like to check on it from the overview and if you can double check here the private ip address is what it shown there 10.0.0.7 so it is secure the private endpoint now let's talk about the next layer of security identity and access management identity and access management is all about authentication and authorization so let's talk about the authentication authentication is where like if you are trying to log in into the azure portal you are proving that you are the right person trying to log in into the portal and it's not somebody else the fake person trying to log in so to make sure that you are the right person to prove that you are the right person trying to connect to the azure uh, there is this a uh, multi factor authentication that is set up as part of this authentication where you will get a code to your authentication app or to your phone 
and you will double double like you will be entering that code into the azure portal to even enter into the azure portal right you you all know that if you are using the azure portal uh, we do that all the time so in the authentication like both the azure sql and managed instances support this sql authentication as well as the azure active directory authentication you can also do the azure active directory authentication only but if you try to build the azure sql database before that you have to build the logical server because that's how you will be able to connect to your azure sql database right so when you build the logical server you will be you will be also giving an id and password with the sql authentication and that credential that sql authentication login id and password will become the server level principal but if you are if you are building the managed instance then that particular id and password will become the sysadmin it will become the sysadmin server role part of it when we talk about the authorization authorization is all about you are giving the users the permissions to access the resources itself like the tables views what not the resources within the databases so for the both the azure sql and for the managed instance they support the database roles as well as the custom designed roles but like as a principle of least privilege you can also give the role level security now let's see like uh, when i said like when you are building the logical server for your azure sql database the login id and password will become the server admin so i'm trying to connect to the dg test server which is a logical server here and if you see there the highlighted the server admin is deepthi that is a sql authentication login id that i provided that will automatically will become the server admin there are also certain role based access control um when you uh, when you try to build your database like role based access control are like what can and cannot be done to your resources so there are like three basic roles there are several other roles as well but then these are the main ones when you are trying to give access to the resources owner as the name itself says they can do everything they can read modify and assign contributor can read and modify but they cannot assign other users to those resources to any of the resources reader as the name says it can only read the resources but it cannot do anything and you can actually um like these permissions to the subscription resource groups and resources they can be inherited so when i said role based access control where where can we actually see these roles right so let's connect to the dg test server and underneath the dg test server go to the access control which is also known as iam once you click on that you need to first go ahead and add a role assignment to actually see these roles so let's go ahead and click on add and add role assignment which will show you the main three roles these are the roles that we were talking about these are the roles where we can give the access to the resources now let's see the differences between the logins users uh between the managed instance and azure sql database so when you build the managed instance um you can create the azure active directory server admin but also you can create the sql or azure active directory logins both of them and just like the way you create the login id logins and the associate users for your databases you can create the same database users here you can also create the contained users just like the way you create you create the logins and users on the on prem servers is the same way here but additionally we have azure active directory logins that we can create now let's compare that with the azure sql database similar way we have the azure active directory server admin you can create sql logins um as well as the azure ad logins but additionally you have the other roles like the login manager db manager these are the additional roles that we have for the azure sql database which we don't have in managed instance now why do we have these roles like login manager and db manager just to limit 
limit the people to give the server admins but also at the same time give them the access to manage the manage the databases here we can create the database users as well as the content users including the including the ad users but the thing is here the main thing that we need to remember is if you want to create the logins or if you want to create the users for the azure sql database you need to definitely log in as the Azure Active Directory server admin only. You cannot log in as a SQL authentication login and you cannot create the users. It have to be Azure AD server admin. Let's talk about the interesting topic, data encryption. So under the data, data encryption comes under the data protection, data protection layer. So we have different flavors under the data protection um encryption is a main part of it encryption in transit encryption in transit meaning like the data as it moves in and out of the database from the database to the application from the application to the database as it is being moved in and out the data needs to be protected and by default encryption in transit is taken care by the transparent layer security um, this is by default enabled and you are enforced to you are enforced to choose the TLS version. You cannot skip that. And encryption at rest is like is like the data files, log files, backup files that are located on your drives. They have to be protected as they move in and out of the drives. So even this encryption at rest is by default enabled and enforced by using transparent data encryption. Encryption in use is something different. Like when you're not only like data while in transit, while it in rest position, the data needs to be also protected while it is being processed within the query engine. So that is being done by the technology known as data enclaves, which, are we, which we are going to talk in the coming slides. Encryption in transit, like I said, it is taken care by transparent layer security, which is by default enabled. But from your side, what you have to make sure is that you are always enabling the latest version of TLS. We have different version and the oldest version are getting deprecated. So you need to make sure that um, you, your application is actually supporting the latest version and you are actually enabling the version that the application supports. And you also need to make sure that encrypted connection from applications is always turned on. If this option is turned off, you will not be able to connect to your database. So where do we see this, right? The trans transparent layer encryption, where do we see this? Um, so go to the DG test server, which is a SQL server. We are talking about the security. So the network underneath the network, go to the connectivity. Like we have seen the private um, endpoint and everything, but at this moment you need to go to the connectivity tab. Underneath the connectivity tab, you have encryption in transit and you have all of these minimum TLS versions, right? 1.0, 1.1 1 .1, and 1.2. I believe that uh, TLS version 1.0 is deprecated. So you need to make sure, you know, your application and your minimum TLS version are in sync and supported. Let's talk about the encryption at rest. Like I said, your data files, log files, all of them needs to be protected. Here, uh, the encryption at rest is enabled by default, but you have two options. Either micro, you, you can say like by default, Microsoft can take care of all of your keys because these keys like encryption at rest are taken care by the TDE. Um, like two options, like I said, Microsoft can manage all of your keys. Um, they can um, actually rotate the keys and everything. You don't have, you just have to enable and then forget about it. You don't have to worry about the rotations and all. But there is also other option, bring your own key, meaning that you will build your own keys. Save those keys in the key vault. Key vault is an application from Azure. So you will save all of those keys in your key vault and you are responsible for the key generation, key rotation, and also giving the access to the um, users who need access to these keys. Now, where do we see these 
um, encryption at rest, right? Again, underneath the SQL server, which is security demo in my case, go to the security blade underneath the transparent data encryption. Once you click on that, you see all of these options. Underneath the transparent data encryption, you see service managed key and customer managed key. Service managed key is nothing but Microsoft is going to take care and that is enabled by default. But you can change that to customer managed key where you are saying that I will build my own key and I will save my own key into the key vault and I will manage it. So if Microsoft is managing it, we do not have to worry much about it. But let's talk about the customer managed key. So I clicked on the customer managed key. Now I need to select the key but I do not have any key. So first we need to go ahead and create the key. So how do we create the key? First, we need to build the key vault. So go ahead and search in the search bar for the key vault. And once you get it, create the key vault. It's very simple and it's not that expensive as well. You can create as many as key vaults as you want. If you have like multiple uh, clients available for you, you can create key wall for each of those clients so you can manage those keys nicely. Let's say we build the key wall and after building the key wall, go to the objects left side your screen underneath the blade, right? Go to the objects and we want to create the key. So after creating the key, I have created two keys already, but I would like to show how to create them. So I will be clicking on security demo one to show how it looks like. So while you create, right, the current version is automatically populated. That is an um, internal algorithm which will be create the version for you. You need to focus on the activation date and also the expiration date. So once I click on that one to see the details, if you see the key version on the top, it says the key version. And if you see the properties, the key type, the RSA key size, those are automatically populated. Um, the most thing that you wanted to um, focus on is the activation date and expiration date. And you need to focus on the expiration dates because once it expires, it's up to you to go ahead and rotate those keys. And while building the same key, at the same time, you can also enable the permitted operations like whether you can give the op like permissions to encrypt and decrypt this key. You can choose that one while you create the key. Let's say I have created this key. Now, if you choose like uh, underneath the same key vault, if you click on the access policies, you can also give access to the users like to access the keys to wrap and wrap. You can give multiple users the access. It's up to you because you are you are actually managing everything, right? And then now I build the key vault. I build the key and I have given the users access as well. Now I have to come back again to the underneath the SQL server and underneath the security blade again, go to the transparent data encryption. And as we clicked on customer managed key, now I would like to go ahead and select the key because I created the key. And underneath the key, I will go ahead and click on change key. And I will choose the which key vault I would like to choose. And then I will choose the key to use for this transparent data encryption. And if you see the version is automatically populated. Now, once the key is expired, you need to come here and change the new version. Click on select and click on save so that you, you are now a customer managed key. You choose to build your own key and save your own key. That's the encryption at rest. Now let's talk about encryption in use. This is like a client side encryption technology where the data is actually being encrypted while it is being processed. So the, there is this one single SQL client drive right in center of your database engine as well as the data client. So what it does is like the data the database engine will actually delegate the operations on the encrypted data to the enclave where the data can be safely encrypted while it is being processed. So you might be thinking like, OK, but why do we actually use this? Like what kind of operations 
uh, are accepted and supported by the data enclaves. Like the operations which involves the rich queries like the patterns matching like if you see on the slide you can see it on the screen that he says like sorting indexing um like queries where you use greater less than um operations it it actually supports that um let's talk a little bit about the dynamic data masking as well it is similar to the way that we have masking on prem servers but the way that we build uh, that the way that we enable is a little bit different in the portal um so un underneath the database, like we have adventure works here. It is my database, Azure SQL database. Once I click on that underneath the security, remember we have the security blade at the server level as well as at the database level. So underneath the database level, I will go to the dynamic data masking. And the information that you need to create the di dynamic data masking is like the schema name, table name, column name on which column you wanted to mask the data, it will automatically show you the suggestions for the mask functions. Now, please remember that dynamic data masking is totally different from the encryption. Dynamic data masking will only mask your data within SQL Server, but it will not mask or encrypt your data at rest, like your data files, log files, backup files, if those things are not enabled, like they are enabled by default, but it is totally different from encryption. Let's talk about the threat protection and detection now. Like underneath the threat protection, we have Azure Defender, uh, SQL Auditing and Azure Security Center. SQL Auditing is similar way that we do with on-prem servers. Azure Security Center is like a centralized location where you can see everything that got gathered. Um, like once you enable the Azure Defender, once you enable the auditing, it's like a, a centralized location, the Azure Security Center, where you can see all of those collected data. Let's talk about the Azure Defender. So basically, the, in the Azure Defender, we have two flavors. SQL Vulnerability Assessment. It's like once you enable this option, it will go ahead and assess the configuration of your database itself, comparing with the standards of the Azure. So Azure have certain standards on the configuration of the database. So if it is not aligning with those standards, you will see those assessment results underneath the Azure Defender because you enable this option. Azure Defender also have the threat detection, SQL threat detection. So let's see a little bit more on the on those options. We are talking about Azure Defender, right? So underneath the uh, server, we need to go to the server level. Underneath the auditing blading, auditing blade again, you have Microsoft Defender for SQL. You need to either turn on or off. I would like to turn it on. Once you turn it on, you need to provide a little bit of information here, like subscription. Of course, so you need to provide the subscription details and then the storage account. Where do you want this details to be stored? So provide the storage account. If you do not have, you can create it here itself. And you can also provide like an email address where these reports need to be sent over time. Right. So I have given my email address here. And once I enable it, immediately you cannot see the results. You need to give certain some time for the like, for example, 30 minutes or one hour to grab the data. Like it have to go ahead and compare with the standards of Azure. So I have waited for a couple of minutes to get these details. So I have gone through the SQL server underneath the SQL server. I went to the security blade underneath the security. I clicked on Microsoft Defender because we enabled it. And now I would like to see what are the assessment details I have. Now it, I see six recommendations for findings. I would like to go ahead and see more details into it. So I clicked on view additional recommendations at the bottom of the screen. Once I clicked on it, I see all of these recommendations. Like if you see, um, there is this red button, like red color, which says like those are the ones you need to focus more on. Like 
for example, enable MFA and all of these. These are the basically these are the assessments comparing with the standards of Azure. Everything regarding the configuration, right? The database configuration. This is at the server level, but at the same time, I can also see at the database level. Underneath the Adventure Works database, I can go to the Microsoft Defender for Cloud. I see three findings. Now I would like to see more on it. So I will click on View All Recommendations highlighted in blue. Now, if you see the vulnerable vulnerability assessment findings, I see the IDs. These IDs are looking like like um, the codes, right? These are from Azure. So it says like um, we have different severity levels. If you see high and low here, let's say I would like to click on the first one. Database owners are as expected. It is showing the severity is high. Now, why is it showing that? Let me go ahead and click on it to see more. So it says like remove the unnecessary database owners. You do not need all of them, but let's say I need them, right? It also gives the recommendation to remove those owners, but let's say I need them, so I created them. So I can just go ahead and add them as a baseline, or I can remove these as a baseline. Uh, that's how you will see that. Let's talk a little bit about auditing. So to enable the auditing, which is by default, it's enabled. So once you enable the auditing on the server level, all the databases underneath it will automatically get audited. So underneath the so SQL server, which is a DG test server, underneath the security blade, you have auditing. Once you click on auditing, as it is automatically enabled, but what you have to do is you need to set up a few like what is a storage account or do you want to put it in a log analytics? Choose the subscription and then um, I have choose the log analytics to create the um, default workspace to save all the data for the auditing. And if you see underneath the screen, you have enable auditing of Microsoft support operations. You can either enable or disable it. But the thing is like if you enable it, and if you open a ticket with Microsoft, they have the ability to read your audit logs. So it is recommended to enable it. So once you enable it, the auditing starts running, right? Now I would like to see the audit logs for the database. Again, go to the database. Adventure works here in my case. Underneath the security, click on auditing and click on view audit logs. So once I click on view audit logs, I can see a dashboard of information with the logs. So I would like to click on view dashboard, which will open up a nice um, bar graphs dashboard. You see the circle as well as the bar chart, but the left side of your screen that is related to like, which says like the circle that you see, access to sensitive data. It is related to the data governance, which we are going to talk in the next slide. But right now, please focus on the Azure SQL Security Insights. That's the audit data. Let's click on that. And if you see here the audit distribution and some of the action items shown there, batch completed, database authentication, and RPC completed, those are the regular audit events, right? Now let's go ahead and click on that to see more details. So after clicking on that, you can you can actually see and you can run queries to see the audit data. And let's say I have grabbed certain information like I can see. These are the statements that got executed. What is the instance name, database name, object name, all the information like just like the way you get in your audit details on prem. You can get everything here. And this is the last um, security um, security information like uh, one of the layer like data governance, which comes under the data protection itself. It is also known as data classification. Now, why we say as data classification is because we are classifying the data based upon the sensitive level. Let's take an example and let's create um, the data classification here. Adventure works database. Go to the adventure works database here. Again, under the security blade. Data discovery and classification. Click on that. 
And here I have created um, the data classification based upon my sensitivity level, like based upon my internal policies. You need certain information. You need the schema name. You need the table name on which column you want to uh, create the sensitivity label. You need to know that like SSN, passport number, whatnot. Uh, information type, like the column information you already have, you can go ahead and choose different sensitivity labels on it, like high confidential, confidential, low confidential, those sort of labels you have, certain labels, you can choose that. Let's say I have chosen that, very simple, you need to just drop, drop down and click on the tables and click on the columns and click on the labels. Very simple to um, actually um, to build it. Now, after I have built that, I would like to see if somebody has actually uh, tried to uh, try to act like try to retrieve that information. That is the main point of like data classification. If somebody access it, I need to get an alert, right? So once you do that, as you already have the auditing setup that data will be captured as well. So how do we access the data? By going into the database, underneath the auditing again, go to the audit records, open up the open up in the dashboard where you will see this information. You can see how many columns have been are being confidential and how many queries has actually executed. So I have actually created this data classification and I have um, I have executed certain queries to retrieve those sensitive label data. So I, I have so this this information has been captured here. So I would like to go ahead and see the details of those queries. Now I clicked on number of queries information to see what are the queries that are executed. Again, it will open up the logs information um, where you can query. You can you can run and see more details into it. Um, so here, if I see, I have the product ID in my sensitivity label. So when I retrieve that product ID, I have this information is actually captured in the logs. So it will give you all the details like again, like the regular audit details, who has actually run um, and uh, all of the other design, what instance, what who is the user who actually executed and what query has been actually executed. So we have seen all of the in-depth defensive layers of the security in Azure. But if you'd like to learn more on this topic, I have created series of blog posts on my website, dbnuggets.com. Um, underneath the Azure, um, and underneath the Azure tab, you can see the series of um, blog post on each and every uh, security layer. I have described more. If you would like to learn more about this topic from Microsoft, these are the series of um, series of uh, YouTube videos that we have. Each and every video is about like one hour, one and a half hour. Um, because I followed these resources to prepare my presentation, it's like a very valuable information. You can learn more from it. And this is the feedback. Please, please, please give me the feedback if I need to improve, if I have any accent, or uh, if I need to improve more, please tell me what I need to improve on. If you like it, please tell me that you liked it. I'll feel happy, but then I'll also focus on like if, if at all I have to improve what I have to improve. So I'm really thankful that you attended my session and I hope you had a very nice um, SQL Bits day today. And I would like to thank you all one more time for giving me this nice opportunity to share my uh, to share my knowledge. And I would like to thank SQL Bits for giving me this wonderful opportunity. I had a chance to speak two sessions. Um, so if you would like to contact me later, again, I have this contact information here. Uh, please contact me on LinkedIn, Twitter. It will be an honor to get in touch with you. And if you have any questions, if I don't have time, please uh, ask me on LinkedIn, I can definitely answer your questions. Thank you.